Hi there, this is Ilke Klein, and today I'm going to show you how to use distortion creatively as a, a mix tool. Um, distortion is often used, of course, uh, well, to distort things, um, but another use is that you can really use it to uh, change things in the mix and to make it easier to uh, master your track to acceptable volume at um, the end of the, the process. Um, and to give you an idea, I'm, I'm taking settings to the extreme, um, but this should give you a pretty good idea of what I mean. Um, these are the, the, the drum tracks uh, from a track that I recently mastered. And I'm just going to loop this part right here. As you can see, uh, the end limiter, this is on the master channel on stereo out. Um, it's roughly limiting the clap by 8 dB and the hi-hat by 5 dB, which is quite a lot. It's way too much because everything else at, um, that's playing at the same time would also get affected by ADB or worse. Um, so that's not something I want. Um, so if I turn on my distortion unit on these two channels, the clap and the hi-hat, you can see that my limiter is not acting at all. And You can you can hear the difference really because the limiter is uh, acting really uh, harshly right now. And the nice thing about distortion uh, that's something that not people a lot of people know. But if I take it on this uh, higher channel, for instance, um, I'm using the MOOC filter, which has a drive function. Um, but I can also uh, show you this trick with the, uh, the the default Cubase distortion unit, which I will do so uh, later on. Um, if I turn this off. And on, there's a slight difference. You notice the attack gets a little bit um, well squashed and the tail gets lifted a little bit. But it's not it's not a major difference. And whether you would hear this in the uh, entire track with everything playing is uh, questionable. But the nice thing is if you look at the, uh, the channel settings um, without the uh, distortion playing, we're hitting at about minus 11.3 dB. If I turn the distortion on, you win about 7 dB. So that's that's quite a bit. And you can tell by looking at the uh, the meter here, it's limiting the hi hat. If I turn the distortion off, it's limiting the hi hat by 5.5 dB almost. And by turning it on, I've just um, well prevented that from happening, uh, making sure that all the other sounds that play at the same time as the hi hat don't get uh, limited that heavily. And you can do the same for the clap. Um, if I take the clap sound here and I turn off my distortion unit, it hits at uh, minus eight more or less. And by turning it on, we go all the way down to minus 17 or minus 18 almost. So that's uh, almost 10 dB of, of uh, headroom we just gain by distorting the sound a little bit. And like I said, this is using the, um, the standard Moog uh, filter. I'll show you the same trick using Cubase standard distortion trick, um, so you don't need any fancy plugins to use this. We want it to sound a little bit the same, so we're going to change the tone, up, give it a bit of boost, some feedback, and we're going to compensate for all this volume. Get in there. Pretty close. Um, and the nice thing is, if you, you you can tell if you look at the channel meter here, you've gone from um, minus eight to minus twenty dB almost. And you can really tell that on the master limiter as well. So now that the hi hats are playing without the limiter kicking in, well, the, the limiter kicked in on the other thing, um, which I didn't distort, but. Um, as you can see, um, this trick is uh, is really neat to, uh, to to keep the volume of certain elements of your track under control. Works best on percussive elements on drums, uh, which don't have a lot of bass. Um, you don't want to use this on kick drums or anything. Uh, but hi hats, percussion, um, small clicky sounds, etc. Everything which has a hard attack uh, can really be tamed in uh, in this way. So uh, put it to good use. Cheers.